Hi, I am Prashant of CSCC section B.Tech first year. Today I am going to do a presentation on hydrogen and sustainable fuels. Introduction Oil refineries in the USA process almost 17 million barrels of oil each day, producing over 9 million barrels of gasoline and 2 million barrels of diesel fuel. Gasoline and total petroleum expenditures were 1.8 billion US dollars and 336 billion US dollars respectively in 2001. Today, petroleum consumption is over 20 million barrels per day. For conversion, one barrel of oil is equal to one, almost 160 liters of oil. So now let's talk about petroleum. Petroleum has been a valuable resource for many years now, but it also came with many problems like environmental impacts. It causes habitat destruction, water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution, etc. Climate change. Burning of these fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases like methane into the atmosphere which warm up the planet and raises the ocean levels. Social and economic impacts. For example, it can lead to displacement of indigenous communities as well as economic disruptions in areas that rely on tourism and other industries. It also pollutes the area around the place where petroleum is found. Overall, while petroleum has been a valuable resource for many years, it has also been a source of many environmental, social and economic problems. As such, it is important to consider the negative impacts of petroleum and transition to cleaner, more sustainable energy sources. So now we have learned why we have to switch to alternative sources. We have now let's talk about the alternative sources. So the first one is hydrogen. Hydrogen is a promising alternative fuel that has the potential to be clean, renewable and sustainable energy source. It is the most abundant element in the universe and we produce from variety of sources including water, natural gas and etc. And the best part is when hydrogen is burned, it only produces water as the byproduct, making it a clean burning fuel. Hydrogen has several industrial uses, including production of ammonia, methanol, and treatment of refinery streams, and hydrogen of vegetable oils, etc. So, but although hydrogen is abundant in the universe, on Earth, it is only available in small quantities. Hydrogen is typically manufactured by steam reforming of natural gas, which is composed largely of methane CH4. Steam reforming reaction The st steam methane reforming reaction combines methane and water to form carbon monoxide and hydrogen according to CH4 plus H2 gives rise to CO plus 3H2. This reaction is endodermic, meaning the energy must be added to convert the reactants to products and maintain a constant temperature. For this reaction, methane is limiting reactant and water is supplied in excess to shift the equilibrium to increase the conversion of methane to hydrogen. Steam reforming process A typical process flow sheet for steam reforming of natural gas is shown here. Note that there are three reactors, several heat exchangers and pressure swing adsorption unit and compressors, but compressors are not shown. Na natural gas feed steam is preheated before entering the desulfurization reactor by exchanging heat with flue gas leaving the reformer furnace. Heat from Flue gas is also used to generate steam, some of which mixes with natural gas feed to the reforming reactor. 
द स्टीम टू मेथेन रेशो इज मेनटेन अब मिनिमम वैल्यू फॉर टू इम्प्रूव कॉन्वर्जेशन टू हाइड्रोजन एंड मिनिमाइज द कोकिंग फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कार्बन डिपॉजिट्स द बाई प्रोडक्ट स्ट्रीम फ्रॉम द रिएक्टर कंटेंट्स कार्बन मोनोक्साइड हाइड्रोजन एक्सेस वाटर एंड अनरिएक्टेड मेथेन द कार्बन मोनोक्साइड सी ओ लेफ्ट इन द प्रोडक्ट स्ट्रीम इज फर्दर रिएक्टेड स्ट्रीम इन वाटर गैस शिफ्ट रिएक्शन टू फॉर्म कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड मोर हाइड्रोजन अकॉर्डिंग टू द रिएक्शन सी ओ प्लस एच टू ओ गिव एच टू सी ओ टू प्लस एच टू सिंस दिस रिएक्शन इज माइल्डली एक्सोदर्मिक रिलीजस एनर्जी इट इज फेवर्ड एट लोअर ऑपरेटिंग टेम्परेचर दैन स्टीम रिफॉर्मिंग रिएक्शन हाइड्रोजन इज सपरेटेड फ्रॉम कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कार्बन मोनोक्साइड वाटर एंड एनी रेसिड्यूअल मीथेन कंट्रोल चैलेंजेस कन्वर्जन ऑफ मीथेन इन द रिफॉर्म रिएक्टर इज फेवर्ड बाई हाई टेम्परेचर वेर एज हाई ट्यूब टेम्परेचर लोअर द ट्यूब लाइफ टाइम सिंस ट्यूब टेम्परेचर्स आर एफेक्टेड बाय एडजेंट फ्यूल गैस फ्लोज ए कॉर्डिनेटेड और मल्टी वेरिएबल स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर मैनिपुलेटिंग द वॉल्व पोजिशन इज नेसेसरी टू अचीव टाइट टेम्परेचर कंट्रोल लाइक मेनी प्रोसेस नेशनल गैस फीडबैक स्टॉक कॉम्पनसेशन कैन वेरी एफेक्टिंग द प्लान ऑपरेटिंग कंडीशन द रिफॉर्मर ट्यूब कैटलिस डीकेस विथ टाइम रिक्वायरिंग द ट्यूब टेम्परेचर set points to be changed model predictive control is used in most new hydrogen plants to enforce constraints and handle multivariable interactions hydrogen pipeline operation pipelines present challenging control and supply chain management problems particularly when several hydrogen plants supply a single pipeline to several customers The air liquid operations control center in Houston regulates 1,660 miles of pipeline supplying oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon monoxide to plants on the Gulf Coast and the Mississippi River. Every six hours, an optimizer determines the equipment configuration and energy supply that minimizes energy cost while satisfying the consumer demands. future hydrogen sources in the long term it is important to develop additional major sources of hydrogen electrolytic methods to split water into hydrogen and oxygen are extremely energy intensive and hard to justify if hydrocarbons are used to generate the electric energy on the other hand wind and solar energy can supply a renewable source of energy for electrolytic production of hydrogen in addition research efforts are developing thermochemical cycle processes where a heat source such as residual heat from from a nuclear power plant is combined with coupled reversible chemical reactions to yield a net reaction of decomposition of water to form hydrogen and oxygen now for ethanol production ethanol also known as ethyl alcohol can be produced from petroleum source ethylene but is more widely manufactured using fermentation of sugars fermentation process have long history dating back sumerian and babylonian beer making which is about 5% ethanol over 8000 years ago henry ford planned to use ethanol in one of his first cars but petroleum based fuels grew rapidly in the early 20th century leading to use of gasoline engines Ethanol has a road octane number of 99 while substantially higher than the 87 octane value of regular gasoline. So ethanol is made by is when glucose is fermented using yeast to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. The stoichiometric equation C6H12O6 Use as to two C two H two O H ethanol plus two C O two indicates one mole of glucose forms two moles each of ethanol and carbon dioxide. A conventional corn milling and fermentation process. The front end of the process involves preparation of corn to pro- provide glucose and other sugars for fermentation reactors.
a second product stream is dry distillers grains and solubles ddgs which can be sold for use as livestock feed the third product is large scale plants is carbon dioxide which can be pressured and used to carbonate beverages or as an inert gas for industrial use a portion can be solidified and sold as dry gas the product split is roughly equal amounts of ethanol ddgs and carbon dioxide this is a conventional ethanol process ethanol optimization and control the multi column distillation process is energy intensive using a large amount of steam in reboilers much of this heat energy is removed by heat exchange with cooling water in overhead condenser the net energy debate there has been a debate about whether the amount of fuel energy required to grow crop and produce ethanol is greater than energy content of ethanol fuel While there has been rapid growth in ethanol production capacity using corn and feedstock, additional feedstock sources are necessary for ethanol to become a major contributor to engine fuels. Biodiesel production. Diesel engines are more efficient than gasoline engines because they operate at higher combustion ratios and temperatures. In an interesting parallel to Henry Ford's plan to use ethanol in internal combustion engines, Rudolf Diesel developed an engine to run on peanut oil. Once again, the supply of cheap oil resulted in the use of petrochemical diesel fuel in diesel engines. Over the past decade, there have been increasing interest in biodiesel fuel, which can be produced from vegetable oils. The exhaust of engine burning biodiesel fuel is said to smell like french fries. Biodiesel is much safer than petroleum diesel with higher flash point and lower volatility. Vegetable oils triglycerides are reacted with methanol or ethanol to yield methyl or ethyl esters biodiesel and glycerin according to triglyceride plus 3 methanol gives rise to 3 methyl ester plus glycerin where methanol or ethanol is supplied in excess to improve the biodiesel yield also a catalyst such as sodium hydroxide NaOH is needed to promote the reaction this is a biodiesel process simulation flow sheet where raw vegetable oil is low used as the feed stock the market penetration of biodiesel extremely small for a, for more substantial impact more acreage needs to be planted with soybeans and similar vegetables Furthermore with more local and regional cooperatives farmers can have joint membership in fuel production facilities this arrangement enables farmers to earn a profit waste cooking oil is cheapest by diesel feed stocks and it is available from kitchens but it is present in many forms as a raw material biodiesel conversion technology is probably best implemented in small distributed plants with short travel distances to facilitate the collection of waste cooking oil for example several small biodiesel facilities located on college campuses use waste cooking oil to produce biodiesel fuel for campus shuttle buses and maintenance vehicles while the combustion of ethanol and biodiesel result in carbon dioxide exhaust much of the carbon dioxide is recycled to grow more plants thus the impact of biodiesel as a fuel source is a net decrease of carbon dioxide generation of 78% compared to petroleum based fuels few future trends transportation fuels are largely petroleum based at the same time that a hydrogen economy is being developed the hydrogen source will largely remain hydrocarbon based using natural resources substantial effort is required to reach a level of production at which alternative and renewable fuel sources have become major impact on transportation fuel supply 
Bioethanol production facilities may be located closer to biomass sources, enabling better use and distribution of co-products such as livestock feed. Thank you.